Here we present a case of laparoscopic cytoreductive surgery and hyperthermic intraperitoneal chemotherapy for peritoneal metastases of colorectal origin. A 21-year-old male with colorectal cancer was referred to our center after robotic surgical removal of primary tumor at another institution. As pathological analysis reported residual peritoneal disease, we recommended and he consented to perioperative systemic chemotherapy and cytoreductive surgery with HIPEC. Six cycles of Falfox and Panitumumab were administered without complications. As the restaging CT scan showed a low tumor burden, limited to the left iliac fossa and pelvic cavity, and no extraperitoneal metastases, we decided to proceed with cytoreductive surgery and HIPEC. Even though laparoscopic cytoreductive surgery is not the standard treatment for colorectal peritoneal metastases, we proposed this approach considering limited disease, previous mini-invasive surgery, and patient motivation. The patient was placed in a supine position. Using an open technique, a 12mm camera port was placed in the midline above the umbilicus. Four other ports were placed along the midline and in the flanks to access all four abdominal quadrants. Our preference is to use 12mm ports as a larger port size better accommodates the HIPEC catheters. Two video monitors were positioned at the patient's left and right sides and were moved from head to toes as per surgical need. The operation started with peritoneal washing for cytological analysis and a careful complete exploration of the abdominal cavity. Tumor nodules were observed in the left iliac fossa and pelvic cavity, as reported in the preoperative CT scan. Other suspicious lesions were found in the right iliac fossa, left parietal peritoneum, and bilaterally in the inguinal canal peritoneum. Nodules of uncertain nature were observed on the glissens capsule and the small bowel serosa. After complete exploration of the abdominal cavity, the extent of peritoneal disease was assessed using the peritoneal cancer index. The calculated PCI score was 5, and since complete cytoreduction with no residual tumor could be achieved, we proceeded with laparoscopic cytoreductive surgery. Conversion to laparotomy would have been performed in case of radicality doubt or technical unfeasibility. A partial left parietal peritonectomy was performed to remove the mucinous deposit on the peritoneal surface. Peritoneal stripping was carried out as described by Sugar Baker. Monopolar or bipolar scissors were used to speed up dissection and simultaneously minimize blood loss through electrocoagulation. The pneumoperitoneum eases this type of dissection by enlarging the virtual space between the peritoneum and posterior fascia or muscle. Stripping of the left iliac fossa peritoneum was challenging, as we found multiple dense adhesions from the left hemicolectomy. The left external iliac artery was identified and preserved. The left ureter was identified and preserved, and the peritoneum was lifted and excised along with the nodule. The pelvic peritonectomy commenced from the prevesical side to access the extra peritoneal space in a simpler plane compared with the pararectal space, where we expected to find the colorectal anastomosis and adhesions. The peritoneum was dissected until it reached the peritoneal incision of the left iliac fossa, then it was lifted to dissect the extra peritoneal plane toward the anterior wall of the rectum.
The peritoneum was sectioned above its reflection on the rectal wall, exposing the mesorectum and the pouch of Douglas, and it was excised and removed along with the nodule. Once the pelvic peritonectomy was completed, a leak test using transanal air insufflation was performed to exclude rectal perforation. The dissemination of cancer cells in the inguinal canal is rare, but it must be ruled out with careful exploration, especially when preoperative imaging does not describe inguinal metastases. Laparoscopic magnification is helpful in the detection of these metastatic sites that are not so easily identifiable during laparotomy. The peritoneum of the inguinal canals was pulled and dissected along with the nodules. A small sample of the glistens capsule was collected for pathological analysis, and the remaining micronodules were electroevaporated. As part of standard cytoreductive surgery, the greater and lesser omentum and the round ligament of the liver were excised. The rationale is that greater omentum plays a major physiological role in lymphatic drainage and immunity control of the abdominal wall, potentially harboring microscopic metastases. Greater omentectomy was performed preserving the gastroepiploic vessels to allow better stomach function. A partial lesser omentectomy was performed with preservation of the accessory hepatic artery arising from the left gastric artery. The falciform ligament and round ligament of the liver were radically excised from umbilicus to portal insertion. The nodule on the small bowel serosa was excised and removed. The area was then electroevaporated, and the intestinal wall was reinforced with an interrupted suture. Biopsies of the subdiaphragmatic peritoneum were bilaterally collected to complete surgical staging. After achieving complete macroscopic cytoreduction, the patient was prepared for HIPEC. A thermal probe, two inflow, and two outflow catheters were introduced into the abdominal cavity through the port sites. Optimal catheters placement was ensured by direct laparoscopic visualization. Outflow catheters were positioned in the subdiaphragmatic spaces, inflow catheters in the pelvic cavity. Our preference is to place the inflow catheters where there is the largest metastatic peritoneal involvement to ensure a higher temperature in those regions. The thermal probe was introduced into the pelvic cavity through the umbilical port. After reaching optimal flow and hyperthermia stability, cisplatin and mitomycin C were injected into the circuit, and interperitoneal perfusion was maintained for 60 minutes at 41.5 degrees Celsius. At the end of HIPEC, the abdomen was drained, washed, and carefully explored to ensure hemostasis and absence of thermal lesions. Ports were removed, two drains were placed in the pelvic cavity, and the abdomen was closed. The procedure lasted approximately 525 minutes. Estimated blood loss was 100 milliliters, and blood transfusions were not required. The postoperative course was uneventful, the patient rapidly resumed gastrointestinal function and was discharged from the hospital on the fifth postoperative day. Pathological analysis reported mucinous adenocarcinoma metastases in major response to chemotherapy. After surgery, the patient underwent six cycles of adjuvant chemotherapy with Falfox. At present, he has no signs of recurrence and returned to normal life.